duet, and then the, this other notation, which is similar to what you saw before, is the part that I played, which is a sequence of four changes. And I performed this piece in this um, space in Austin, Texas, see how the power plant. It's a closer image of the installation. See how we're, my installation is just over in this one little segment, and there we are. And then this, uh, these are uh, the uh, performers who played uh, the box bow for I'm going to play a little piece of that. It's 25 years old, and uh, I've been able to retain that because the whole structure is modular. Um, that is, uh, the soundboard is has a sliding in through this groove. The back plate is, has another um, routed groove that it slides into, and it's all held together by the string pressure. So I can change out parts. I can um, put on a different type of wood back plate, different thicknesses. I can redesign things, and it's all modular. Um, and what I found out is that um, uh, mahogany has a beautiful tone. My, my resonator boxes have been made out of plywood all these years. And um, I want, you know, the tone quality is, is on a whole different level. And um, although this kind of looks here kind of like a Danish modern drawer, <laughs> um, on the inside, I've been tuning this wood and uh, working with tap tone. And I, I got this beautiful little uh, Japanese plane. And be careful, it, the blade is on the bottom. But um, And this much uh, shaving uh, is, rep it, yeah, you can pass it around. You can just be careful, don't hurt yourself. But um, this is uh, 10 cents. Uh, uh, if you're, any of you are familiar with, with cents in terms of tuning, um, 100 cents are, is there are 100 divisions between um, a half step and um, Musical interval, and um, so this represents like ten cents of um, uh, shavings out of out of that one of those boards, and I can I can tune it really accurately, and it's my the resonance is really it's just wonderful. So that's what I'm doing right now. See. Does anyone have any questions? Actually, 
I have a quick question. Okay. The one, uh, the one album I have uh, by you is titled Body Music. Yeah. Why Body Music? Well, I mean, isn't it obvious? I'm, I'm every motion in my body is reflected in the sound. If I jerk, if I any, you know, every sound that I, uh, every movement that I make, you hear it. Um, and so, uh, actually, over all these years, um, if you see me perform and you don't watch my feet, I can I can move as if I'm kind of on a conveyor belt. You just you don't see any any uh, movement uh, in the upper part of my body. So uh, I've learned how to how to be very very smooth, and that's why. <laughs> so. Any questions? Yes. And you said that you didn't know anything about music? No, I didn't. No, I was a visual artist. Well, I mean, we're talking 35 years here. I mean, <laughs> it's just step by step by step. You know, so I had friends. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, I've, I've got uh, friends who, you know, have PhDs or whatever, you know, I'm just, just talking to people, reading, you know, trying things. Really, the instrument is my music school. And I don't know a whole lot about um, contemporary music. I mean, I, kn I know about contemporary music, but not so much historically mu music theory. I, I know the physics or the physical part of what my instrument tells me. And, you know, that's my world, so. When you were explaining your work to us, you said that when you started, you were using plywood. Yeah. Then you said you switched to mahogany and found it gave you, a, I would say, maybe a richer sound. Yeah, but I switched to mahogany two months ago. Okay. Oh. So <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask, first of all, what inspired you to switch to mahogany, and then second, if you discovered that mahogany can give you a different quality of sound, are you or have you thought of experimenting with other ways to expand that? vocabulary and music that you can create. Right, okay. Um, what, uh, the way I feel about it is um, I, I did some reading. I'm just, I, I feel like I'm in a hurry because I really want to get back to music. And it's like I want to uh, up my game uh, somewhat, but I don't want to go crazy just, you know, getting into resonator design. Um, and and I, I um, tried maple, which is, I, I wanted to start with the tr tradition. Mahogany is used um, on back plate and sides of traditional guitars. Um, maple is the is the body of all string instruments, cello, you know, piano, all the structural parts, and with spruce top. This my my resonator has a spruce top. Um, so I just wanted to start with the obvious, you know, what's out there because this is an experimental instrument. No one's ever done this before, so you know, it's just like start with something that you can grab onto and. Um, I tried maple, and really, it did not resonate. It's like, and, and um, the mahogany, for the moment you hold it in your hands, it just, it's just ringing. It's beautiful, and it's. And I tried. I went over to McBeath hard, uh, hardwood. I went around. I, I tapped, you know, different woods. I read about woods. There's no comparison. It's just, it's just so beautiful the way it sounds. So I stuck with it, and I don't really care to do a ton of exploring that level. I want to get back to composing music. So. Yes, hi, Barbara. <laughs> okay, this gentleman has a, a question. Okay. I think he's asking, um, is there a difference in the quality of the sound of your work um, between CDs and vinyl? CDs and vinyl. Okay. Um, I've got a couple of vinyl releases. Um, Okay, I really, you know, um, haven't been an expert on that issue, but I will say that the, in the past, um, uh, like like a couple of months, uh, like three months ago or so, I just decided to, to put in a, a home stereo system, went on eBay, just like collected everything, you know, to get all formats, you know, cassette, vinyl, um, CD, uh, DVD, like in, you know, just to make it easy, because like I'm working with a computer, I have my monitors, but I never listen to music because it's such a, a pain to like take all my stuff apart and then put in, you know, you know, something to listen to. So, so I decided to just have a dedicated system. Uh, we put on 
an LP, and all, uh, all of a sudden I, I thought, wow, that has body. It has a kind of plasticity in the sound, this analog sound. It's really great. And I actually haven't listened to my, my own releases, so I, I haven't really experienced that. You know, um, I've always felt that CDs were, were limited and kind of harsh sounding, and also that it's, you know, my instrument is a different, difficult thing to record. Um, because it's very rich, it's very, yeah, so very big, fat sound. So I have yes. a question okay. from me. About 1980, I went to a Terry Fox sound, um, interactive sound installation. I think yes. it was in the bottom of a veteran's building. And he pulled all this, this string all over, and the people who were, went to the event went into this very dark basement area. Of, it was either the bottom of the opera house or the veterans building. And we were invited to touch the strings. Have you ever heard of that? Does that have any correlation? Yes, so my Terry Fox story oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered all this stuff like on my own, like very naively. Like, oh, well, I had, I, my inspiration was Alvin Lucier's music on a long thin wire, which is like an, it's like an installation where the, well, the ma uh, magnetics like activate the wire, you know, and there's no, uh, uh, there's no uh, performance involved um, in terms of like, playing, but I had I thought um, I it made it made me curious about long wires, and so I I, d I just strung up a long wire in my loft space in St. Paul, Minnesota, and then accidentally I discovered this fact of like because I had been bowing, like it produced like this I, when I brushed against it accidentally, it produced this other kind of tone, this smooth tone. And so that got me started, and it was—it's just. And then later, I heard about Terry Fox, and I heard about Terry Fox when I moved to New York City. Um, a, my composer friend Arnold Dryblad, who you saw um, pictured, it, we performed a duet together. Um, he said, "Well, you know, this has been done before. There's another artist, Terry Fox, who's, who's done this work, and he played an <coughs> album of Terry's. Um, Terry spent a lot of time in Berlin." and um, was on a, a fellowship, which I also had the same fellowship many years later, but um, he uh, installed one wire um, in a beautiful, like, ancient, you know, building in, um, in Europe and just ritualistically walked back and forth for 12 hours, you know, playing one string. Uh, I was really uh, crestfallen to know that someone else had done this before. I thought I had, you know, totally made, you know, invented this uh, idea. And but after thinking about it, um, I decided to pursue it because my, um, my idea uh, is to play music, compose music, to tune it, um, to think of it as a musical instrument. And so um, it's totally different from what, what Terry Fox did. Uh, Terry Fox wouldn't have any of it, anything of it. You know, he, when I you know, met Kim and, and told him what I was doing, I mean, he always referred to me as like copying him. You know, he didn't believe me. But anyway, that's just how it was. <laughs>